everyone, how's it going? So in case any of you guys are new here, hi, my name is Atisa. I am a third year graduate entry medicine student at the University of Birmingham. Today I want to share with you my personal statement for getting into this course and what I wanted to do is essentially show you a screen capture of my personal statement in Word with a couple of notes and comments that I made and kind of just talk you guys through it. Now the reason that I decided to do this is because when I was writing my own personal statement I remember asking a lot of my friends who had already gotten into medicine to have a little read of their personal statement just to get a little bit of an idea about what kind of things they mentioned, how they structured it and also how they reflected on some of their experiences. I know that not everybody may have the same access to I guess friends or colleagues or you know general other people that may share their personal statement with them and I know just how useful and how helpful it was for my friends to be so kind and share their personal statement with me. So yeah, I just want to preface this video by saying that this is just a singular example of a graduate personal statement. So don't worry if you guys might not have the same experiences or that yours might look and sound completely different. It doesn't matter. The whole point of a personal statement is to get across you as a person. And as I go through my own personal statement, I want to talk about general comments and general things that I learned from looking at lots of different examples so hopefully it can just spark thoughts in you as opposed to me saying you should write this or you shouldn't write that. So yes, I really hope that you get something out of this regardless. Alright, so let me get a screen capture going and we can get started. Okay, so I've got a Word document open here and as I said I've made like little comments and notes in the corner just so I can keep this video coherent but if there's anything else then I'll share with you as we go through. Oh, Right. So, my aspiration to pursue a career in medicine began by observing the translation of science from bench to bedside and its incredibly positive impact on the lives of patients. So essentially what I've said in the comments here as well is that you want to make the first sentence kind of punchy. So that's what I was told by people to essentially get across why you want to do medicine in one or two sentences right at the beginning. So that's what I was going for with my first sentence. And essentially if any of you guys are familiar with my background you know that I did a master's in cancer research and through that I got to work with a lot of oncologists and that was essentially what sparked my desire to want to go and study medicine. So then I go on to say during my BSc and MRes I worked on two 10-week projects at the NICR and two six-month projects at KCL respectively. Now you guys may already be familiar with this but essentially I think you have 4,000 characters in which you have to write your personal statement so at any point where you can abbreviate then go ahead and abbreviate. NICR is the Northern Institute of Cancer Research which is the institute of which I did my projects when I was studying at Newcastle and KCL is King's College London. And I think the people reading through these will be familiar, especially because your UCAS application will be accompanied by, sorry, your personal statement will be accompanied by your UCAS application. So if they're like, oh, well, what, what is NICR? They will just be able to have a look and they'll say, ah, okay, Northern Institute of Cancer Research. Or they might just make that assumption based on the fact that I had mentioned that I studied at Newcastle. So yes, abbreviate, save those characters. I then go on to say, my MRes allowed me to work closely with a clinical oncologist, attend clinics, MDMs, which stand for multidisciplinary disciplinary meetings and have the privilege of meeting the patients whose participation in clinical studies enabled our research project. During this time it became very apparent to me that the most rewarding aspect of my studies was communicating my knowledge of medical research in the clinic leading me to consider medicine as a vocation. So again the comment that I've made here is that I elaborated by discussing my research experience and how that led me to medicine. So yeah, basically start off with kind of like a snappy sentence to say this is why I want to do medicine and then I spent the next couple of sentences kind of elaborating on that and sharing with the reader. It was the experiences that I had in labs and the experience I had working with an oncologist and it's because I want to communicate my knowledge in the clinics that led me to want to consider medicine. And that itself just gives the reader an idea of where I'm coming from and why I want to do this. Next, moving on to the second paragraph, this is where I started to get into a little bit of my own experiences. So this includes, and I'll, I guess I'll read it so you guys can see in a minute, but essentially I started talking about my shadowing experiences, my volunteering experiences and personal experiences that I have had. So to begin with, to gain a better insight into medicine, I obtained a total of 
three weeks shadowing experiences at two different hospitals. Now when I first wrote this draft I had written I gained one week of work experience at um, Royal County Surrey Hospital and two weeks at King's College London Hospital but again in order for you to reserve as many characters as possible it's okay just just say that you did the three weeks you don't need to go into the details of um, which units or which hospital if you don't think it's going to add anything if you think it's going to add something by all means and if you have the characters but in my case I just said three weeks of shadowing experiences at two hospitals and that seemed to be enough so continuing on an experience that left an impactful impression on me occurred whilst shadowing an oncologist here I met a distressed patient who had been refusing treatment for several weeks by inquiring and carefully listening to the patient I uncovered that she had concerns regarding her personal life that she felt had not been addressed by the medical team she was fearful that receiving aggressive chemotherapy would make her frail and disrupt her ability to care for her disabled son this profound experience taught me the importance of taking a holistic approach to patient treatment and I'll continue in a second because I've got a semicolon but basically I wanted to share an experience that I had and reflect on it and you guys may have already heard this from other advice that you may have gotten regarding writing a personal statement but more than you telling the reader what you have done I think what they want to see is how you have reflected on that experience so that was the experience that genuinely did stand out a lot for me because as kind of like a young student who was just shadowing it was quite like jarring to see a patient be that aggressive and angry and you know distressed and this was a patient that had been diagnosed with breast cancer so obviously you can see the gravity of the situation and essentially by the end of the consultation she became quite emotional and she told us that you know the medical team hadn't asked her enough about her home life and whether she's going to be able to cope and who's going to help her you know who's going to look after her and it was only then that she mentioned she has a disabled son and obviously she's the main caretaker and that did stand out to me a lot because you know with certain chronic conditions like cancer then it is very very important to consider the patient holistically and because that experience stood out for me I decided to reflect on it and just talk about it in a couple of sentences. Now the next thing I did, hence the semicolon, I'll continue in a minute, is I kind of took the experience that I reflected on and went on to speaking about some of the personal volunteering experiences that I had been working towards. So I'll just read that sentence again. So this profound experience taught me the importance of taking a holistic approach to patient treatments semicolon, an experience I keep at the forefront of my mind as a volunteer of over 17 months at St. Trinity Hospice. Now the reason why I've specifically mentioned 17, like over 17 months, is because talking about the duration that you have spent at a certain place kind of gives you credibility in terms of commitment to something. So I could have just said, you know, as a volunteer at St. Trinity Hospice, but, well, was that one month? Was that a week? Was that two months? So I wanted to show my commitment, which is why I put that amount in. And I would encourage you guys, if you have been carrying a certain volunteering role out for a long time, then mention that duration because as far as I'm aware, anyway, I think it gets you brownie points. Okay, and yeah, I've made a little comment here that says I've made a link between what I learned in my work experience and in my volunteering experience. So in this role, I provide emotional support to patients and ensure that their physical health needs are met by communicating effectively with the hospital clinical team. So, and I've made a comment about it here, but basically it's very tempting when you're writing a personal statement to say, I have good communication skills or I have effective time management skills. And I think instead of stating those in a sentence, it's better to give an example of how you have demonstrated that. So by me saying that I have carried out my volunteering role and I have made sure that the physical health of my patient is met by communicating effectively with the hospital clinical team, that's showing that I'm developing communication skills throughout this experience without directly saying, I've improved my communication skills. Do you see the difference? In this way, I'm kind of demonstrating how I'm doing that. And I would encourage you guys to tell the reader how you're developing a certain skill rather than just saying, I'm developing this skill. Okay, so continuing on. As the role involves having difficult conversations about the patient's experience of palliative care, I obtained Sage and Time certification, a course designed to further develop communication skills with distressed individuals. This allows me to provide better support to my patients and their family by actively listening and showing empathy. Similar to what I just said, instead of saying I'm an empathetic person with good listening skills, I have just tweaked that and reworded it a little bit to say that um, I have carried out my role 
by actively listening and showing empathy. And then finally I decided to finish off this, this section on experience by talking a little bit about a personal experience that also had an impact on me and got me to start thinking about medicine a bit more. This has been reinforced by my own recent experience of losing a family member to glioblastoma. I have developed the understanding that caring for patients isn't always about providing a cure. It is equally important to empathetically and effectively support the patient and their family throughout the difficult end of life transition. And I don't know if you guys have been picking up on this, but something that I tried, I tried very hard to do it. I mean, hopefully I did an okay job of it, but I've tried very hard to kind of link things to each other and make everything flow rather than just saying this is what I did and then randomly going and talking about another subject somewhere else. I've tried very hard to kind of link things and have kind of like a systematic way within a paragraph. Then we're going to move on to the next paragraph and this is where I've started to talk a little bit about my work experience or I should say my experience of work as a research technician. So I have written, my role as a research technician at KCL has also expanded my understanding of the interplay between science and medicine. I currently support two observational studies and work within ethical guidelines to consent patients and obtain blood samples using my phlebotomy skills. So once again, instead of saying I am tra trained in phlebotomy, I have kind of reworded it a little bit to show that this is a clinical skill that I know. Um, and I've also tried to put it in a context and say that this is a skill that I know and this is how I've been using it. So then moving on, I've written, I conduct real-time functional assays of cancer patients enrolled in my group's phase one clinical trial, the results of which guide clinical decisions. These opportunities have allowed me to develop the necessary skills needed to work effectively within a multidisciplinary team. So once again, I feel like this is a point that I'm emphasizing a lot just because I think it is very important. Um, instead of writing, I have good team working skills or I work well within a team, I'm an effective team player or something like that. Instead of saying things like that, if you just like slip and slide <laughs> like how you're a good team player within the context of an experience you've had, then I think that makes it a bit more effective to the reader. So yeah, and in my comments here I've put, it, I've put that this is an example of teamwork without me explicitly saying that I work in a team or I'm a team player. And then the next paragraph I decided to dedicate to some of my extracurricular and hobbies. Oh, extracurricul extracurricular activities and hobbies. So alongside my academic pursuits, I am very passionate about engaging the public in science and helping students succeed academically. During my BSc, I worked as a student mentor for two years as part of a widening higher education participation program and led an after-school science club for primary school students during my MRES. I have also built up a YouTube channel with a community of over 16,000 regular viewers providing content on study skills and my personal insights into medicine and research. These activities have been hugely rewarding, allowing me to develop my confidence, verbal communication and time management. So actually reflecting on that, perhaps I could have worded things a little bit better so that I didn't necessarily need to list that I have developed my confidence, verbal communication and time management. But I guess in this context, it didn't seem too off to me at the time. And I think it sounds okay now. And then to finish off, I've written, additionally, in my spare time, I enjoy painting and creating artwork, a hobby that I am very enthusiastic about. And the little comment that I've made on the side here is that mentioning extracurricular activities and hobbies is a good way to show your personality. You guys have to remember that the people who read these must read literally tens if not hundreds. So if you add a little bit of something that makes you different, it could be a hobby. Like literally, that's just one sentence to say that I enjoy art. Um, so if you have a particular hobby, if you have a particular interest. I know a friend of mine who got into Oxford wrote in her personal statement about how she likes to review foods. And when she got invited for an interview, they asked her, they said, you know, where would you recommend for us to go out for a meal? And she was like asking them in an interview, oh, well, what kind of food do you like? And, you know, I know this place in this part of London and that place. So, you know, it's kind of nice because it allows you to share a little bit of your personality and depending on the school that you apply to, you may get asked about it in an interview as well. And then finally, this is my concluding paragraph. I am confident that I can use my tenacious drive, enthusiasm, commitment and resilience to thrive in a challenging field of medicine. I aim to continue striving for academic and personal growth in order to expand my knowledge and abilities, in order to make a positive impact on the lives of patients as a doctor. So again, I wanted to kind of leave a bit of a punchy conclusion and I wanted it to be kind of 
forward looking if that makes sense which is why I've written I aim to continue striving for academic and personal growth just to show the reader that you know everything that you read in this personal statement isn't something that is stationary it's something that I want to continue improving on I want to continue improving my personal growth and growing and maturing as a person I also want to continue striving for my academic goals and I think it's kind of nice to have something a bit more future facing in the concluding paragraph and the final thing I want to make a comment on, um, and I've made a little note about it here, is that I've written in, in order to make a positive impact on the lives of patients as a doctor. And the reason why I put that in, I can't remember who gave me this advice, but they said if you want to like, try to avoid saying things like I want to make an impact on the lives of patients because you could be asked things like well you know nurses have impacts on the lives of patients, healthcare assistants do, psychologists do, you know, so for that reason uh, they said to put as a doctor so that's what I've um, made sure to kind of finish up on and there you have it guys that was my graduate entry medicine personal statements um, and I think it was written in 2018 I hope you can take away certain things that you can apply in your own personal statement and hopefully it's gotten you to think a little bit about maybe how to structure things or as I said just giving you an example of one just one personal statement that a student who got accepted may have written. So I sincerely hope that you have enjoyed this video and found it useful and if you did and you would like to support me and my channel then I will leave my art shop link below. Until then if you have any further questions or anything else that you would like me to make a video on then leave your suggestion below or message me on Instagram. Otherwise I hope you have a wonderful week and I will see you later.